Let us look inside ourselves for a revolution. And let us look to the novel. The thing about Nagy is that he's not just a novelist. I mean, he, he's a columnist, he's a journalist, he's an art critic. You know, he founded a, a theater space, an art magazine. I would describe Ahmed as a person that challenges taboos. And if you read Ahmed's work, you can definitely tell that it's about pushing the boundaries of what is acceptable societally or not. His novel, Using Life, had illustrations, you know. It was made into a multimedia show. It starts in a happy way where all these young people are celebrating the lack of surveillance and of security in the streets right after the revolution. And then it sinks into this whole dystopian Cairo that sucks everyone's soul, you know? Ahmed combined the taboo of sexuality and the taboo of drug use. Being arrested for him was not a surprise. What he was surprised about was that it wasn't his political commentary or activism, but rather a novel. Uh, there is someone who went to the police office and accused me for disturbing public morals and hurt him and hurt his feeling personally. We saw this is like a kind of uh, a comic case and the prosecution is going to close it. This is a novel. It has been approved by the Egyptian authorities uh, like a novel and published and sold out in all the Egyptian markets as a novel. He's describing the that trial happened, he was acquitted, so everyone thought, you know, everyone took a breath and uh, the prosecutor was allowed two weeks to, to appeal, and they did. It was a shock. We thought that no one can break the Constitution, so it was shocking for us to hear the maximum sentence. He was transferred to prison. To have Ahmed Nagy be sentenced for fictional writing and being actually sent to jail for that, um, it's unprecedented, at least for Egypt, for this country. Persecuting Nagy means persecuting a generation, you know? I think that the, there is no future now for the freedom of expression in Egypt. It just doesn't stop at Ahmed, and that's what we are afraid of. This is the nightmare. I've spent months in that prison where he is right now and i told him what anyone in this situation wants to hear that there is solidarity behind you the public outcry that followed his sentence was unbelievable everyone was so angry at this unacceptable case his case has galvanized the egyptian literary community and we want to stand in solidarity with them and make it not just an Egyptian cause, but an international cause. The Freedom of Write Award is a very powerful tool. Over the years, 35 out of 40 recipients have been released, due in part to the pressure that's generated by this award and the surrounding publicity. Naji, we're proud to give this award in your honor. We're proud that you have the courage to be an example to writers everywhere. A heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your bravery. I gave the award news to Ahmed while visiting him in prison, and he was so excited and happy. He didn't lose hope at all. He's writing now in prison, and he's almost finishing his new novel. There is no greater freedom than freedom of the imagination. It is our hope, our optimistic hope, that giving this award to Ahmed Naji will bring him to freedom. Maybe, maybe, if we could get Ahmed released, something will change. Some other people will have hope to fight this. In cases where authorities are trying to silence these individuals, we have the opportunity to step in and make sure that their words and their stories are heard, that their face is seen, that their name is repeated. When the government tries to deny them a voice, we can be their voice.